on the way to the dirt bike track. Going to ride some supercross, do some supercross laps. It is super foggy. And now I'm about to go into the sun. Can't see. Oh, really can't see. Drive to the track is beautiful. Over mountains, through wineries. But I tell you what, you really gotta pay attention because these roads oh, are not easy. Oh, yep. Oh, oh. There's a 50-50 chance that every time I get to the track, my gas can's laying on its side and just spilled out half its fuel. I'm gonna do a video on how to properly warm up. I think this is extremely underrated and I just thought of a few super important points to tell you guys regarding this topic when I get to the track. I'll show you a video of what exactly my warm up looks like. A few things. Firstly, warm up, especially for 99.9% .9 of people watching this video, beginner, amateur level riders, you're racing local races that are, for what, four laps? For all intents and purposes, it's a sprint. And the warm up for a sprint is the most important thing. I think the misconception with a proper warm up is people think you just hop on a spin bike or do a couple jumping jacks and you're good. A proper warm up brings you through all of your heart rate zones, which means for whether it's 15 to 40 seconds, you're hitting zone five, 170, 180, 190 beats per minute for those few seconds just to get your heart warmed up, get everything loose, ready to go. You're not spending a while in that zone. To do a proper warm up, you have to hit that zone. The way you do it is you gradually increase from zone one. So let's call zone one, everybody's a little different. 100 to 120 heart rate, spend a little bit of time there, go to the next zone, go to the next zone, and then do a slight little cool down. For me, my warm up in an ideal situation is 15 minutes. It's also really important to place this warm up as close to the event as possible. If you do this warm up and then you sit around for 45 minutes, you've essentially wasted that energy that you used during the warm up. I think what a trainer told me is the goal is to place it within that 10 minute window. So when your warm up ends, you have that 10 minute window of the effectiveness of the, the warm up going down and down and down the longer you wait. If you're in staging for too long, do your warm up in staging. One thing I've noticed, and there's been very few guys I've seen do this, Eli Tomac in Supercross, when we're in the tunnel before races, he gets off his bike, takes his helmet off, and does wind sprints back and forth in the tunnel, right? Basically as the mechanics are pushing the bikes into the gate. I actually do the same thing as Tomac. Meanwhile, everybody else is kind of just hanging out, which is bizarre. You have a bunch of pro athletes that are just sitting on their butts and wasting that last 10 to sometimes 20 minutes, depending how long that lag time is. Don't be afraid to look like that guy because you're not. If anything, if any high level Olympic athlete, any athlete would be looking at these motocross guys sitting stagnant on the bikes, like what the heck are you guys doing? You don't see Olympic runners waiting on the start line just sitting crisscross applesauce and just hanging out. No, they're doing dynamic stretches, they're doing uh, some type of dynamic warm up to get keep their bodies loose right up until that gate drops. I told you guys I have a beautiful commute, just wanted to show you a little bit of what that looks like. Get that. Man. All right, so you're always gonna wanna start with some type of dynamic warm-up and dynamic stretching. What that is, is that's um, constant movement. It's not a static stretch. So when you see people stretching, like just reaching down, touching their toes, holding a stretch, that's a static stretch. Static stretching is for post-workout. Don't necessarily wanna be static stretching a cold muscle. So dynamic stretching, um, just anything to get the blood flowing. I'm gonna run you guys through my routine real quick. This probably takes me three minutes. Arm circles forward and back. Two leg swings. Ten each side. Sideways leg swings. Idea is to open up your hips. Hip hinges, so just two hands here, 
Oh, he probably can't even see me. Oh well. If you're doing this right, it's not a squat. You're just hinging at your hips, trying to keep the legs just slightly bent. You should be feeling this in your hamstrings. And I don't feel like doing wind sprints because you're not going to be able to see me running back and forth. So I'm just going to bust out some jumping jacks. I just did, after my jumping jacks, a couple wind sprints back and forth for about five minutes. Nothing crazy. The idea is you want to be able to go out there from lap one after your sight lap. So let's call it lap two and go hard. I think a lot of people are like, oh, well after my first moto of the day, after the first couple of motos, my arm pump becomes less and less. That's because you weren't warmed up for the first moto. <laughs> Get truly warmed up, hard enough to where your warm up feels like the first moto, and then your first moto, you'll hold on a little bit less. Your breathing will be more consistent. Your body will be able to burn fat more efficiently. It's the whole point of a warm up. Don't feel like you're gonna tire yourself out for the event. I promise your guys' events are short enough to where this is well worth it. All right, gonna fuel this thing up. Just got this new gas can, Risk Racing sent it to me. This thing looks really, really cool. Five gallon jug, but it's nice and small. What's cool about this thing too, I'll show you guys, is that the screw in the back to create that airflow is like this cool like billet of aluminum. I don't know what that is pretty high tech looking. And then the best part is when you take the cap off, it's got that wire. And with this wire, first time using this thing, boom. It just goes right under that. And that way, pour it right in. Pretty awesome. Sounds silly, but wow, see? One man job, you don't have to have somebody trying to get the uh, nozzle into the tank, no spillage. Something nice like this is huge when you, I mean, you're using it every single day. I have a discount code in the bio below for 20 or 30% off, so make sure you use that code. Grab one of these cans. Show this huge. Maybe I can convince Logan to do some super cross. <laughs> but today the plan is a bunch of two lap sprints. Reason for that is just working on intensity and and speed. It's not often and it, it definitely, I don't think I've done it in the past five years, which has been a problem, is I've, I've focused more on tempo laps and longer motos, which is great for building endurance, but it's not great for building the sprint speed. So the warm up this morning was super important to be able to go out there with just did one site lap, just to make sure the track was safe and then got right into two lap sprints. The goal is to push myself way out of my comfort zone like I am at a race where I start to be, feel tight, I start to get arm pump. Try to replicate all of those uneasy feelings of being at a race. Doing a long tempo moto when I'm out there for 20 minutes, um, I get into the zone and that I never get into the zone at a race. You're always being pushed out of your comfort zone and trying to ride extra hard. So. Today, I, and honestly what I'm gonna to continue to do is just that, just short motos, add the intensity to them, and just try to keep beating my lap time goal. So before today, my best lap time was a 51.0, got it down to a 50.2, so that's almost a whole second off. Uh, I'm gonna to try to just keep that consistent and improve a little bit at a time. It's off the rear brake. Now normally, Levi, where would you guess that you'd wanna be off the rear brake for a corner? Do you wanna go stand? where you would get off the rear brake? Okay, very good guess. Now in most situations where he just stood is exactly where you would want to get off the rear brake, right? Because you would charge in as hard as you can, you would brake, and then you'd be off that rear brake, lined up with this stump because then you'd make that quick transition to the seat and begin your acceleration. I want to reverse that thinking a little bit. We're not going to touch the rear brake at all. Reason being, with how soft this is, especially on the little bikes on the 50s with the small wheelbase, as soon as you let off the gas, this mulch is going to act as your brakes. 
with how rough it is on the entry. As soon as you touch that rear brake, the bike is gonna start dancing around under you. If you actually stay on the throttle in the zone where you would normally be like, oh crap, I gotta get on the brakes, just stay smooth on the gas. I don't care if it's one fifth throttle. I don't care if it's one tenth throttle. Barely turn that thing. But what it'll do is it'll lighten up the load just enough to where your bike will kind of just skim across it. Normally, I would say sure, come outside, swoop in, hit this nice smooth line, set yourself up for the corner, but I want to practice the rough stuff here. So let's just go this side of the cone. Let's hit all that rough stuff just to get a good feel for it. Do not even think about sitting down until you are past this stump. Can you stand later than that if you want to? Sure, but do not sit down until you get right here. The worst thing you could do is sit down right in one of those kickers or even, even right here because you see this hole with an extra bump. If you sit down in this hole, you're gonna seat bounce yourself into the corner. The bike isn't gonna be able to get settled for the turn. So stand up in your attack position, knees back until you get to this stump. Once you get to this stump, boom, then we can make a transition to the front of the seat and roll the throttle on nice and smooth. Sometimes his knees might even be above the seat, but it doesn't matter because he's got his feet angled the right way to where he's got those knees locked. What you notice is he didn't charge in wide open and then slam on the brakes. He came in and just kind of kept steady throttle. The bike looked very slanted to this. One thing he did well on also is as soon as he'd exit and start to ramp back up to speed, boom, he pops right up into the standing position really quick. Notice also when he sits and when he stands, it is not a slow process. It isn't, okay, here comes a turn. Let's think about getting up to the seat. Okay, almost there, and it's quick. He is here, boom, and then he sits. And when he exited the corner, he was sitting, and then when he wanted to stand, boom, he was right into his standing position. There's no transfer time. Sitting, standing. 